Hello everyone and welcome to the final weekly video of me talking about the world beyond and the final video of me torturing myself by reviewing this show. This video does have spoilers from episode 9 and 10, so without further ado, let's begin. If I had to choose just one scene from the world beyond to sum up the entire show, I would choose this scene here. In said scene, the protagonists have stumbled upon a stationary school bus and have to proceed to climb over it. Felix is at the back of the group because he has a busted ankle and is the last person to attempt to climb over. And for absolutely no reason whatsoever, he proceeds to take a stride back, run up and try to jump on the bus, and then his busted ankle gives way and he falls over. Why didn't he just walk up to the bus and pull himself up and climb over it? Why did he feel the need to take a step back and then run and jump like he was participating in the Olympic Games long jump? What Felix does here is completely unnecessary and dumb, and that's why it just sums up the world beyond. He could have taken the easy option, he could have just taken the option which made the most sense and walked up to the bus and pulled himself up and climbed over it, but he just had to go and do something stupid. And that's the world beyond in a nutshell. Stupid people doing stupid shit for no fucking reason. So I did plan on talking about both episode 9 and 10 in this video, but to be honest I don't think I have the strength to do that, so I'm just going to skip to the end of the show and let's talk about the awful way in which The World Beyond ended. I can't believe that I pretty much called this ending in my episode 8 review. In that video I said that I prayed that it didn't turn out to be that the asset was just going to be one of the protagonists and come the end of the season the CR would show up and Elizabeth would be there twirling a moustache saying Ah, oh, you are the asset. You're the assets, and everything that's happened has just been to test you, the assets. It was all a grand plan by us, and that's basically what fucking happens. Hope is the asset. Apparently, she's some kind of child genius, and this is shown via flashbacks because, of course, it is. Everything in this show is shown via bloody flashbacks. And in one of the flashbacks, she's there taking apart a computer and putting it back together, and her dad says, Oh, this was the moment I knew she was special, and... I mean, yeah, okay, it's impressive, I couldn't take apart a computer and put it together again, but that doesn't make her a Mensa candidate, does it, just because she took apart a bloody computer? But anyway, apparently Hope is this genius, a genius who's going to help with her dad's research, and that's why the Civic Republic want her, and okay, it's a bit far-fetched, but I can accept that, I can accept that Hope is this gifted and clever kid, but what I can't accept is the reasoning behind why all the events of this season have taken place and why the Super Republic just didn't take hope in the first five minutes of episode one when they were there at the university campus with her. The CR have an army, they have weapons, they have helicopters, they took out the university campus which had 10,000 people without breaking a sweat and Elizabeth says they have a community of roughly 200,000 people. So this begs the question, why didn't the CR just take hope away with them during the first five minutes of the first episode? Just take her with you and then force her to work on whatever project it is you're doing. Why facilitate her going on this stupid little road trip which you're monitoring? Why go to all the trouble to then have Huck be a spy and try and get someone to infiltrate the group and all the potential problems that that could cause to happen? Why go through all this trouble? It doesn't make any sense. The show does try to give an explanation to these questions but quite frankly it's fucking pathetic. I mean... Huck says that the Civic Republic let Hope go out on her journey on her road trip because they wanted her to have life experience. So the entire events of this season were allowed to go ahead just so Hope could write I have life experience on her CV. What? Okay, I'm being a tad facetious because this answer is expanded upon a bit when Huck says that the Civic Republic wanted Hope to go outside so she could see what the real world was really like and this would then convince her of how important her father's research was and convince her to go join the Civic Republic. But I still think that's a fucking terrible explanation to the convoluted events that we've had this season. I'm sorry, but I just don't buy the Civic Republic risking their most important asset, risking Hope by letting her go outside and coming into contact with walkers and potentially other people just so they could teach her a lesson. I mean, if this is how the Civic Republic act, if this is the kind of decisions that they make on a daily basis, I struggle to believe that they've made it this far into the apocalypse. They would have just taken her in the first five minutes. That would made sense. This makes no sense. You want to show what life is like outside the walls? Well, just take her away during the first episode and show her what it's like in the helicopter or take her to the base and show her what you're doing, the research centre, and show her what's going on. Or just show her a fucking PowerPoint presentation. I don't know, just anything but this. This is so dumb. 
We need to let her go outside and have a whole season of all these events happening so she can see what the world is really like. No! No you don't. Just take her during the first five minutes when you were at the fucking university. Why? Why are you making things so complicated? Hell, you could have just even asked Hope if she wanted to come along. Just say to her during the first episode, your dad's doing this important research, it's very important, could you come along and help us out? That's all you'd have to ask her. She would have probably said yes because she didn't want her dad to go anyway. The entire plot of Well Beyond the Season just stinks of classic Scott Gimple. It's just overcomplicating things needlessly, hoping that there's going to be a payoff, but there is no payoff. The payoff is terrible. The payoff doesn't land. And then you're just left with gaping, massive plot holes. Anyway, let's move on from this awful ending and talk about some of the other things which I disliked about these two episodes. So first off, the dialogue was terrible again. And here are some of my favourite lines. So here we go. So first up we've got, It's not up to you to carry everyone else. You have to put your trust in other people. Now here's a line which Elton says to Percy. He says, The wind brought me to you. It's a sign. Really? The wind is a sign? And then we've got the last line which says, There's no point trying to outrun pain. It will sit patiently and wait until you're too tired to run. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. And don't even get me started on the last scene of the show, which is Iris doing a voiceover saying that her and Hope were both the asset because they made each other stronger and they can both have the potential to do anything and oh my god. Another thing that didn't really make much sense to me is that it's shown that Felix didn't injure his ankle on barbed wire, which is how he thought he injured it. Instead, Huck sliced his ankle with her bladed baton thing. And she did that whilst he was holding off a walker. And you're telling me that he didn't feel the force of a blade being swung behind him, this big, you know, baton weapon coming down that didn't make a noise, he didn't feel the air, he didn't feel anything. He just thought, oh that's some barbed wire which has snapped my ankle there. Yeah I know there was barbed wire on the walkers which was connecting them together, but come on. How did he not feel this blade? How did he not feel Huck going down with a force behind him and cutting open his ankle? Come on. I also found Silas's heroic sacrifice at the end of the season to be just laughable. I mean, Silas says to Elton and Percy that he will stay behind and slow down the Civic Republic soldiers so they have the chance to get away. Now, when someone says, I'm going to slow them down, they normally do something to try and slow them down. They normally put up a fight. They normally let them chase you. They normally do something which lets the other protagonist get away. But he just gets on his knees and gets arrested. So I fail to see how this slows them down because he might have slowed them down by about 10 seconds. That's it. Oh yeah, I'll slow them down by just letting them take me. Nice one, Silas. The only thing that I did like about this episode was the fight between Huck and Felix in the burning house. They were both fighting with their bladed weapons and pushing each other through walls. And that was really well choreographed. That was a bloody good fight, you know, compared to even the other Walking Dead shows. It's just a shame that the story surrounding the rest of the episode was absolute tripe. So that's all I really want to talk about, to be honest. I mean, there are other reveals and there are other things which are hinted at during these two episodes, like Huck being related to Elizabeth and big, you know, what you could say are big reveals for the story and its characters, but I don't really care because the overarching narrative, the overarching plot of Hope being the asset and the CR just letting her roam around the country the entire season just so she could learn what the world is like, I just think that's so dumb that I don't care about anything else. I think a lot of the Well Beyond's viewers who have watched the entirety of this season, a lot of them have just pushed along with this show hoping that things would be worth it in the finale, hoping there'd be a big reveal, you know, hopefully something about the CRM, maybe we'd learn more about the Walkers, what they're doing, but we don't learn any of that. Instead, it just drops the ball with this dumb conspiracy kind of, oh, we, we, orchestrated events all along, like something like bloody Kojima would pull out of his ass in the Metal Gear series, and it just failed massively. So yeah, I just think that these two episodes were terrible. I think it's been a terrible season. I think there was no payoff whatsoever. The ending irritated the head out of me. I mean, maybe you thought it was a good twist. There might be people 
who likes it. I've seen some people on the World Beyond Reddit who think that this twist saves the whole season. Oh, it's genius. Uh, I just don't see that. I just think it's incredibly stupid as an organisation to let your most valuable asset wander around, you know, putting their life at risk just so you could say to her, ah, now you've seen what the world is like, come and join us, when you could have just taken her anyway. I mean, it's not as if the CR pride themselves of doing things ethically. It's not as if they would say to themselves, right, we're going to do this because we can't force her, so we'll let her see what the world is like and then maybe that will convince her. They're not like that because in the first episode they killed 10,000 people at a university. So if they're willing to kill people, why not just take your asset? Why make her go on this trip in the hope that she changes her mind? I just don't get it. It boggles my mind that Scott Gimple and whoever the writers came up with this and just thought this is so clever. This is such a genius plot what we're doing and oh, once everyone finds out at the end it's going to make things be seen in a different light and make it all worthwhile. No, 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 it doesn't. If anything, for me, it just makes the show seem even dumber. And it just makes the Civic Republic, who are being painted as this evil, villainous organisation, it makes them seem like a bunch of idiots because they were willing to go through with this convoluted plan which put their valuable asset's life at risk. I just think it's awful. I think it's awful. I hate it. I hate this reveal. I dislike the show passionately and I don't want to talk about the next season. I don't want to review season two. But I'll have to. I'll have to see it through to the end because that's what I do on this channel. I torture myself for the sake of getting like 500 views because no one watches these fucking videos anyway. But there you go. Well beyond. Terrible. What is with my robotic hand movements? I don't know. Anyway, let me know your thoughts below. I will be doing a big video talking about, well, bigger video. It's not going to be as long as my Fear the Walking Dead video was covering all the problems in 4 and 5, but it will be a longer video than most of these reviews, and it'll be covering everything or most of the things I disliked about this season, and that should be up in a couple of weeks or so. But anyway, let me know your thoughts on these last two episodes. Do you disagree with everything I said? Do you think that this reveal is actually genius? And do you think I'm wrong? But if you do, whatever, I don't care. Just let me know. I like listening to people who have different views than me. I like listening to everyone. And, and I don't know what I'm doing with my arms today. I think I need to do some exercise. I need to get back to the gym. I haven't really done much exercise since lockdown. I used to go running and I used to be going to the gym well every day before lockdown. Not that it really shows, but anyway, I did get a lot fitter. I did do a lot of exercise. And now I just sit at home, doing nothing, working from home. So yeah, I need to start exercising. And again, this is why I script my videos, because I'm going off script now and talking nonsense. So anyway, see you later. I think that's time to finish things now. Bye-bye.